Okay, let's try this again. Damn, I did not expect to be quite this nervous after just a couple of months being away. How we doing? How's audio and video? And how are all of you lovely folks? Let me see who's hanging around this evening. So hey, Borodas, Bremen, uh, uh, Sishon, uh, Faye Gwent, um, Mr. Fiano, uh, Ponda Pimp. Hey, man, good to see you again. Shimera, Taikali, well, Taikali, it's a bot. Greetings, bot. It's been a while. And Uncle Bugsy. How you doing? Cool. Audio video is okay. That's excellent. Greets from all. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I, it's, it's weird, uh, that's, uh, Evianos, I, I, I've been, uh, saying his name wrong forever, and I guess I just hadn't really read it properly, I was like, oh, that's roughly the shape, Fianio or whatever I was saying, Jace, hey you man, cool, Shimera's been trying to do work, not been so good, well, you, you, you need more snacks, that's clearly the problem, like you've already said, okay, what are we doing? I forget. It's been a few months. It's been a while. Um, kind of done a long Christmas and decided the best time to start the new year was well into it, just in case. Um, yeah, there has been... It's been pretty chill. Um, I've been working a bunch on Keppel, obviously, and Vario. I guess we'll do a kind of... This is a weird episode, because I, I wanted one where I can just get my feet again and uh, put the monitor back wherever it's meant to be, after all the adjustments. Um... I wanted to start doing a series of episodes on a similar theme. So um, it's about time we made, uh, well, it's about time we made a little game engine uh, using this stuff and then makes a couple of little games inside it. Um, so what I wanted to do this episode was have kind of a recap of what's been going on in Keppel and Vario and show you a few things that I haven't shown before because they were unstable um, and now they are less unstable. And then, yeah, we're just going to start designing this 2D engine. Because I've got, basically, I, I remembered this uh, little environment called Div Games Arena or something like this. Game Studio. It was, it was something I played with for a few months when I was a kid. And it was really cool. We'll get to that. Right, let's, let's, uh, let's start with the basics. Let's um, yak about what's been going on over the last couple of months. So, my focus has mainly been on, um, on testing and on um, some rather pernicious little um, struct bugs we had before. And they were stopping us using SSBOs and UBOs and things like this. In fact, they affected one of our, uh, affected one of our episodes where we were trying to do the text rendering and we couldn't have a UBO with an array in it because all the layouts were screwed up and things were just going wrong. So um, I've been working on that. And actually I can show you, I mean, the result is slightly anticlimactic, but that's good in its way. If I just go to struct tests here, uh, I'm going to get into the tests as well. But now when you define a uh, GPU struct like this, uh, you can also optionally specify a layout. And this is then going to inform how uh, these guys are laid out in memory. Um, if you want to use this for UBOs or SSBOs, it's going to need to be standard 140 or standard 430. Um, <laughs> of been saying, please point your finger at the screen to show us. It's up here. Everything. All the things you can't see. Man, I was just getting the hang of not doing that. That's <laughs> fuck you. So, um, so yes, this is, this is essentially the fix. This is all you need to know from the user side. Um, behind the scenes, we, yeah, expand all this stuff out. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Michael's saying that except for no 430 for UBOs. Thank you. Yes, I must remember that, and I must also get that check into Keppel. Have I put that in Vario yet? I don't really know. Um, so yeah, that's the main fixes that's been going on. Um, actually, there's, there's a bunch of stuff. Basic, one thing that was really cool, I, I, I wrote up the changelog for the last six, seven months. Um, Darius! Hey, dude! Missed you too! It's been a while. So, I, I, I wrote up this um, changelog. It's actually been a really good last six months for Keppel. So, I mean, back in uh, June, we landed a bunch of improvements to the context and to um, performance in general. Uh, that was a huge overhaul. In July, we got 
multi-sample, color mask, scissors, stencil, and instance array support, which is wicked. So the instance array stuff you remember was so you can specify an array of data and it's per instance, each one, each, yeah, each, each instance gets its own data from that array, which is really cool. Um, and then a couple of months of kind of a few little features, but mainly bug fixes. Then October, we started getting support for shared contexts. Um, that was, the, well, no, sorry. We were getting multiple context support then, not shared contexts by November. We had another bunch of stuff and a lot of that was done with you guys actually, which was really cool. So we got compute support and SSBO support, but the uh, single stage pipeline support that we got in that month and a transform feedback support and all that, that stuff was all designed on stream, which it's just super cool seeing like, yeah, basically what we did last year. Um, shared context support actually landed that month. It's pretty experimental, but it should work, um, at least with the STL2 host. I haven't gone and done the work in. The other, the other hosts have some issues there and I need to go and sort that out, but that's fine. Um, we also got GPU fence, GL queries, um, and a whole bunch of other refactorings done that month. And then December, yeah, was fixes for the structs. See? Pointing now incorrectly again. Um, some deprecated stuff went away and yeah, actually the other thing that we prototyped on stream, which was being able to run GPU functions, um, straight from the REPL, which is wicked. That's now in as well. Again, also very experimental, but the fact we can do it at all is kind of cool. That will break very easily. You can, you can, you can break that fast. And, uh, oh yeah, render buffers went in there as well. I don't even remember adding that, but it's in the change log, so I'm pretty sure I did it. Um, and then... This year, so basically in short, we're really well set up for this year. I think it's actually going to be a really fun year uh, just for working on things. I'm, I'm very interested in making things a bit more stable. We've landed a lot of stuff um, and we really need to test some things. And so I've set up a, uh, an, another repo, repo called Keppel Tests. The reason it's separate is because it depends obviously on a host. Uh, so this is using keppel.sdl2. Um, and we're starting to, again, just use 5am and write tests. Now, what you'll see in here is it's slightly different because normally we write, um, let's see if I can find an example quickly in here. Normally we write our GPU functions like defungg, write some code, and then we write def pipeline to compose all this stuff together. Um, <laughs> I just saw a comment about, um, I traded my beard for code. Now, the, the the beard went because I was having to get on planes again. And, you know, random security checks don't feel so random when you have a beard. Um, so, yeah, that got trimmed. Um, yes, in, in these ones, we get to use something slightly different. We've got pipeline G, and this produces Lambda pipelines. So just like you can have a function, a named function with defun, and you can use uh, Lambda to make a an unnamed function. We can do this with pipeline. And um, when you want to specify a GPU function, you just do lambda G. So this is a GPU lambda um, being made into a pipeline with pipeline G. So you just knock the def off the beginning here and it's exactly the same, except everything is compiled at uh, runtime. Hey, lovely syntax, good to see you, man. Um, so this is all compiled at runtime. Um, we generate code. We actually com we, uh, compile the common list code that comes out of this generation as well, not just the GLSL. So we're making an actual Lambda at that point. Like if I, I wonder if this will just work. We've got a context, this should be fine. What, what broke there? Ah, everything's wrong. Oh yeah, because um, I'm in the wrong package. So, tests. By the way, can you see the code in the REPL? Is that readable enough for you? Tests. Let's see if this uh, works. Oh yeah, it's actually complaining about. Oh. Yeah, it's yes. This is meant to fail. Okay, right. Where's one of the ones that's meant to succeed? Damn it. Maybe this one. Okay, as you can see, what we get back is a closure. So it's it's um, used common list compile function uh, to, yeah, 
make us a REPL. What's nice is before we call compile, we've already generated the GLSL. We've already created the GL programs and all that kind of stuff. So technically, we can inline all that code and compile it together, and then we get this object. Now, what's interesting, well, what is restricted about this is it's only valid on the current context, but that's not normally a problem. So again, this is a super handy feature. Um, you can make pipelines and then you just free call them free on them and they're disposed and that releases the GL object and all that kind of stuff. So this is some of the stuff I haven't shown before because it was super unstable. And in writing these tests, I've started to get the, well, I've made it stable again, which is cool. And so yeah, that's that's working out rather well. Also, I'm hoping that this might even this might be vaguely useful for examples in places that I haven't documented things very well. Um, so, like single stage pipelines, you can see we've got a pipeline here which just takes a fragment shader with a GPU lambda. There's nothing fancy about these uh, GPU lambdas. They're literally just objects, and they store the code until they're being composed. Um, Pompimp is saying code in the REPL is big enough for me. Excellent, thank you, sir. Uh, the best test is does a beggar's dock string fit in one vertical screen or not? I hope not. I hope not. They should be extensive. I have uh, updated a, a bit of the docs as well because it's, um, yeah, there were a few holes in there after some feature additions. Shimera's trying to trick me with questions. Trick question because your editor can do line wrapping. So the answer is obviously, oh, okay, you're replying to Pompimp. Awesome. Okay. Okay, uh, Lovex Semtex is saying it's okay if resolution is equal to or greater than 720p. To be fair, I think that's kind of a prerequisite for this stream in general. Um, because otherwise the font has to be fucking huge. But I'm just aware that this is slightly smaller than this one. Um, so yeah, there's a few examples in here of using compute and using um, SSBOs and things like that. So if I really haven't documented things, which is quite often, um, you can peek in here. Oh yeah, this is actually, this is weird. This one I wanted to show just because it is very unusual. Um, up the top here, let me just move this. One second on the other machine, fiddling around. Okay, up here, we have a GPU function with something slightly strange. Um, this GPU function takes a function as an argument, as a uniform. Now, as we know, GLSL can't really do this. Um, and so what we have to do before we can use this. So basically, I've, I've gone and defined this function, which takes a function, and then I've used it as the fragment stage in this pipeline. Now, this is an incomplete pipeline. Basically, some of the code is missing, namely the code from this function. Um, so what you have to do is you can take this pipeline and you can bake uniforms into it. So if we go down here, we can see bake uniforms, uh, taking this pipeline and then passing in um, a, da, 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 what have I done? Bake func zero, what have I done? Oh, I'm a little bit confused here. Oh yeah, sorry, this one. Oh. That's actually really badly named. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Um, right, so this one. So we're taking this GPU function from here and saying that it is the uniform here. Um, that will then recompile this, make a new pipeline where this code is um, replacing foo. The reason this was originally added was there's this concept in um, shader writing, I guess, in a lot of games called mega shaders. And it's where basically you shove all the code you're going to need, all the variations into one massive shader, and you have if defs around everything. And then you'd use defines um, to turn on and off pieces of functionality in the code, which sounds kind of nasty and low level to me. And what I hoped was maybe if we have first class functions like this, if it's functionality we're turning on off, off and on, we should be able to pass in functions and then regenerate pipelines. It's the same kind of deal, just in a different analogy. And it's more fitting in with a kind of Lisp thing. Super um, experimental. It is a theory at best. It is yet to be tested on some real shaders, but it does act, It does work, as in the code does run. 
So uh, yeah, that was the only other thing I was going to say. We have some. There's been some stuff that's been Keppel that's been in Keppel for a very long time, but hasn't been able to be shown because it was super flaky, and now it is only slightly flaky. The other thing I've been up to is I've started um, writing a fuzzer for uh, Vario, which is the compiler which does the common list for GLSL stuff that Keppel uses. Um, Mark Fiano has been uh, using that and reporting bugs to me very extensively because that thing is, I mean, it was, it's, like I said, I've told this story before, but didn't know what the compiler was when I started making it. Um, that's why the main method in there is called translate. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real thrown together kind of thing and it would be nice to try and make that more stable. So yeah, that's going to be happening this year. That's basically my plan is try and get stability up a bit and then in the meantime, sneak some features in. I'm, I'm very interested in doing some general data processing this year. I want to kind of like on the streams with you guys do some bigger projects like this game engine we're going to start very soon um, and, and stuff like that. And we're going to revisit the stuff that we couldn't do last year because of features and bugs. We're going to take that through to fruition as well. So our text rendering will come back and stuff like this. Um, what else? Yeah, and then like I say, that was the stuff I wanted to do on stream. And then off stream, I think I'm going to be doing some general data processing uh, stuff on the GPU, which is going to be a lot of fun. And it's one of the reasons that I've resisted doing a game engine at all is because if, I, if, if it was a game engine... And then I'm like, hey, I want to do arbitrary, like, I want to do data processing. I want to make, say, a little database that runs on the GPU. Like, a game engine is going to be, is only going to get in the way of that. Whereas Keppel's just about GL, so it doesn't hide stuff away. So we're not having, going to have to fight any abstractions, hopefully, if I've done my job right. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll have some um, re reports and news on that as it happens. It's kind of a maybe project that I'll just work on for a while. What else? There's more things in the plan, but I can't think of it right now. Um, let's, let's start noodling around with some ideas. So this isn't very much, this isn't, isn't really a code episode. Uh, this was going to be a, um, just start planning what I want to do. So there was a game engine type thing ages ago. I should try and find it and put a link in the, uh, Shamara is saying, this year I hope to finally reach my lifelong goal. I've got a feeling you're about to tell us what it is, and I'm not going to be able to say what it is. But go for it anyway. What was it, Shamara? What's the lifelong goal? Um, let's have a look. Uh, Div Arena or something like this? Oh, man. This is a while ago. <laughs> Here we go. This site looks its age. Bless it. Um, if I could actually type for shit, which apparently I can't. <laughs> Chimera, it's to cause nuclear arm again and finally fucking die. Can you leave it a while, please? I'm kind of enjoying myself here, just to glow it a bit. I don't want to die just yet. Um, so, okay, that website isn't going to be very helpful. But what it was, was it was a simple programming language. And you could make 2D games. And it was, a, it was an integrated environment, so you could make sprites in it and all this kind of stuff. So you didn't... And it was, like... <laughs> it wasn't... I don't know. It, it wasn't that great. But the programming language was really interesting because... Because I need coffee. Because it was... I, I guess it was actor model. I don't, I don't really know. I definitely didn't know at the time because I was just a kid. But everything's concurrent. So if you, if you made a spaceship... Come on, wake up. What are we doing? Am I on the wrong... Yes, I'm going to be on the wrong machine, aren't I? Ha <laughs> ha. Some habits will never die. Right, here we are. Let's try this. Cool, so if you were making, let's say, a little space shooter game. You've got some alien things up here, which look like small floaty turds. Space turds. And they're going to shoot things at you. You have your spaceship thing down here. And you wanted to write the code for a bullet. And this is the bullet that's going up the screen and hopefully destroying these things. The... The code to that was in this bullet would just be go forward one. So it would be like, I don't know, forward one or something like this. And that would be it. 
it would be forward. I can't spell either. Doesn't matter. Um, everything ran concurrently. Basically, you wrote little uh, every. Um, what am I trying to say? Every entity in the game. Can you tell I haven't been doing streams for a while? I feel really fucking clumsy right now. Every um, entity in the game was its own process. So you just wrote code about yourself, basically. So in the bullet, we would just say, move forward. And then every frame, it's going to move forward. And then you would have an if in there saying, if I'm touching an alien, right? Um, then die. And it itself would die. Um... And the alien's code would be something like, uh, would tell it to go backwards and forwards up the top here. Um, maybe it was coming down the screen slowly or something, but it's going backwards and forwards. And then it would have code that would say, if um, if I'm touching a bullet, uh, transition into like an exploding state. And you would play a little exploding animation and that would be, you know, like blow up and die. So, um, pardon me. Um, yeah. Like, that, that was roughly... I just love that this thing was completely parallel. And it it sounds like it would be more complicated. I mean, parallel programming is generally more complicated, but there was something really beautiful, beautiful about it because all the updates were done in lockstep. So it wasn't a case of if you moved your character... Like, if you, if you moved your spaceship, then all of a sudden all the others... like. Oh, I'm touching this, so I move, and now you're not touching anymore. All of the others, when the update, would still see that you were touching at that point. So you do all your updates, and then they apply in one big step, and then you do all your updates, and they apply in one step. And it was just, it was really cool. And I want to do that. I want to, I want to make a little two D game engine where you, all of the code that you're writing is for a particular thing, like a bullet or a or a spaceship, and it's all centered on itself. So every every time you say, give me a direction to this or a position to this, it's relative to you. And I don't know. I just want to see what that would be like. Um, so we're going to start looking at cases like this. And we're going to start sketching out what we want the language to look like. Um, and then over the next few weeks, we'll build it. And then we'll um, once we've got the basics of this language, we'll make... I think what we'll probably do is we'll make one of these kind of space games, like a little Space Invaders style thing, maybe, um, or just a shmup. And we will make... I want to do a little top-down tank game. Um, again, another just driving a tank around, shooting things, and they blow each other up. That'll be fine. Um, one of the great bits of news is that um, Borodust has been doing just awesome work recently. Um, one or two you might know, I'm not sure who's, everyone who's in the chat room at the moment, but um, I was working on bindings for the nuclear UI library ages ago, and I've got distracted with Keppel and all this kind of stuff, and I never never got it done. Borodust is outperforming all of us and has made bindings for that, as well as a bunch of other things, which is really cool. So they will be landing in Quicklist probably in the next month or so, if I got that right, Borodust. Um, and it is going to be really cool so what i think we'll do is we'll start out with like no physics we'll just do like if we want to say if something's touching everything is going to have a radius and we'll just say if the radiuses overlap then that's uh then that's a touch right and then when that physics library is oh yeah it's not just the ui library the um chipmunk physics library is now wrapped as well thanks to borrow dust that will be going into um quick lisp i want to get our stuff working and then drop that physics library in and see if we can integrate it. And so we should end up with something kind of cool. I'm really excited. I'm, I'm not sure how well Chipmunk works for top-down games. If it doesn't work well, we'll do a side scroller or something. I'm not sure. Basically, that's the, um, yeah, that's the idea. And say, so, and uh, Point of Paper saying, shmup with lots of bullets. Yes, yes. And we're going to have a really simple model for doing this as well, which I've, I've thought about very briefly before doing this, um, before this stream. I've tried to keep my head kind of free of it so we can work this stuff out together. So, let's get a file. Really doesn't matter where it is. For now, I'll stick in the play with vert stuff because we know where that is. Um, I have pushed... What have I pushed? Oh yeah, there's a fix there. I should push that. Um... Episode 27 on the Play With Verts repo on my GitHub. Um, we'll have very little in it this week. Let's just make a protocode folder and let's 
um, 2D engine. I guess the most important thing that we have to decide is what's it called. I think that's your problem. You guys can work that out. Um, uh, what is it like that? In there? Okay, so we're gonna have um, gonna have a two D engine. Um, uh, everything has its own process and all functions etc are relative to self. Fine, that's like the overall goal. Um, and so, well I mean like the bullet example is probably the easiest one. If I just start noodling out what this could be. Uh, so we define process or thing or whatever it ends up being called and it's going to be a bullet um, move forward one so that would be that's what I would want the code for this bullet to be um, except it's got to be able to hit things so then we'd say um, when touching we really just want it to touch anything we don't care what it's touching um I'm not sure how we'll do this yet like so we got to work out what the api for, for querying if we're in if we're touching anything um is because it would be kind of nice to be able to give like aliens almost like a mask you know like um oh one second shimera says sorry i need to dip out and do something else to, um dude not a problem at all you have a good one. Take care of yourself, right? Um, hey, Sun Gem, I didn't see you there, dude. Um, so yeah, it'd be cool to be able to have like different classes of things. So maybe we can say... Um, so maybe we could say... Because it would be kind of cool to be able to say like... Oh, what would it be? Um, we need a better name. Like, what, what are these going to be? Are we going to call them actors? Let's get let's get a, a piece of terminology that's general enough to use this, like object or entity or actor or something like this. Let's just say uh, actor. Yeah, define actor. So it's just so impersonal. I want something f more fun than that. Somebody get something something lighthearted instead of actor. Actor anyway. So um, I want to be able to say actors in range ten, for example, and. And it, an A would now be a list of the actors. Um, and then we can say if we're touching any of them. So yeah, touching could work on sets of things rather than, or maybe this is, maybe is touching is for one of them and touching any of this would be for a list of them. Or maybe we just keep that really loose and just say, say both times, it's just, Touching for the, for those who are not uh, as used to the Lisp nomenclature, um, when you see hyphen p at the end of something, it means it's a predicate normally. Um, so if you see hyphen p, it's kind of like a question mark. So it's like, am I touching thing? But um, yeah, so maybe things like this work on sets of actors or something like this. Um, come on, guys, help me out. Like, what what would be a it would be a nice term for this kind of stuff? Something that's just like this, um, like, and this, this engine, I really want this to be really like my memories were, were do, using it as a kid. So I love the idea of it being kind of like kid friendly, not in a patronizing way, but yeah, I suppose entity, like, yeah, entity would work. I could, you could say creature, but that kind of precludes robots, which isn't good enough. Um, So Sunjam is saying, probably daft, but for my engine, I grid the playfield and have the entities add remove themselves from cells, and then they can just iterate over their neighbors in the same cell. That's kind of cool. Um, what I want to do very much is that I want all of the units of this to be in... Um... <laughs> Jason is saying two hard problems in CS. Absolutely. 
We're already hitting it. Oh, we can't do anything else until I know the name. Um, I really want everything to be in pixels. And I want... So I want you to be able to like draw a little asset and paint or something like this. And if it's 10 by 20, it's going to be, you know, smaller than something that's 30 by 30. And we're going to keep all of those ratios. Like whatever size you pick for your rectangular image, we're going to respect as the ratios in game. And that way uh, you don't have to worry about scaling and all that kind of stuff for getting it to look right next to each other initially. Um, and I've got some ideas on importing assets as well. I do like the idea of being able to iterate around. So I, I yeah, like this this little kind of query. Yeah, maybe we'll just go with touching and we'll say actors for now. Um, die. Right, so this will be the full code for a bullet. That's what I want eventually in our game. That should be all you have to write to get a bullet working in a basic schmuck. Um, so we've got a few we've got a few concepts that have come out of this already. We need ways of querying within a range. So again, like we're going to specify these ranges in pixels. So um, they're kind of in the. We're going to refer to everything in pixels, and then we're going to have ways of handling zooming in and out. Um, and we're going to try and say like I want I want things where you can sign and say zoom in on this thing or like make this thing fill the screen or make this make the screen be 10 times higher than this thing and that will handle the zoom but all your ratios will be pixel originally um mike fiano is saying i thought three was off by one error oh my god um <laughs> fence post error is very nice um Love like Sam text, good man, here we go. Thing, body, individual, object, presence, presence, existence, substance, creature, yeah. I like some of those. Substance. That sounds so cool. We're playing with substance here. It's like clay. That would be sweet. Oh, that was another thing I actually want to do this year. I'll see if I'll get around to it because it's been on my list forever. There is a great paper on, um, what is it called? Ah. Uh, dual marching cubes so like the the classic uh, marching cubes algorithm is something that can take a um, a density field in 3d space and then turn it into a polygonal mesh there's one that does it um, in a much better way um, which can handle grids of like of adaptive resolutions and produce better features especially around corners and use fewer triangles I really want to do that. They use it a lot in kind of like, well, I think they use it when dealing with stuff like MRI data. That's the classic test I've seen for this kind of stuff is because then you have like density of the body and then you pick a certain density and polygonize it. So you can like, when I was working in the hospital, you could see like 3D models of arteries and stuff like this and all the branching. And you would just set the density until you get the density of the blood. And then you can just, you just see all this stuff. It's really cool, really cool. I want to make one of those. It's a great paper. It doesn't look too hard. Um, yeah, that's another goal for this year. We'll, we'll see if any of this happens. God knows. Right. Querying within a range. Um, die. The fact that die doesn't have to specify anything. Like we're not killing something else here. We're dying ourselves. Um, there is an implicit context of self here. So, so this is like this or self in other languages in like, like C sharp. It's self in Python, isn't it? I like Python, but I haven't written it in ages. It's too much JavaScript. In I should use that. There's that, um, what was it? PyJS? Something that actually supports quite a good chunk of Python in, in cross compiled to JS. But that still leaves you debugging and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to get away from JS every day. Um, so we've got querying within a range. We've got um, predicates that work over sets. I mean, this could really doesn't have to make, we could, if we, if we had a function like saying, um, who's touching me, right? Um, and that returned B. We could just say, you know, touch and be, or oh, sorry, actors in range. Let's do a better example. Say nearest 
actor. Like this. Um, and then we did touching B. It doesn't matter. Like we can have this say if it's if it's past one thing, it just checks that one thing, and if it's past a list of things, then it will check all of them. But I like not having to worry about the differentiation, because again, simplicity. I don't know. Simplicity is subjective. We'll see how it goes. But something like this. Now, one thing we haven't covered here at all is we're defining the brain for something here. Oh yeah. Brian! Brain. We're defining the brain for something. We really haven't defined any visuals for it. I'm not sure if we do that separately. Um, or if we kind of bring it together here. But we're going to need a way of saying, like, of talking about animations and sprites and all those kind of things. Um, and we might want like the alien is going to be an alien like sprite and then it's going to have its animations going backwards and forwards and then when the bullet hits it it might want to change its thing into an explosion i mean yeah we could do that yeah so you, you should be able to set your own visual in some way um i guess again like we don't have to separate those things out we can say we can always be talking about animation or visual or whatever. And if it's an animation, then we'll just play the animation. And if it's a, um, if it's just a single image, then we just display that image. Um, or you could use ClojureScript. Yeah, man, I, I'm, nothing wrong with ClojureScript. Again, very heavy weight for the mobile stuff that I end up doing though. Um, so we'll see. Stuka, a thing in Russian. Sounds like a dive bomber with that Stuka, I think. What's Stuka, Bardist? <laughs> Dare I ask? What am I, what am I getting myself into right now? But yeah, actor entity sort of fits with anything. I know that all these terms are so generic, but you feel like... I mean, the person using it is not going to really care, but it's like having done programming, like, oh, this isn't a real actor, because real actors have these properties, and it's just boring. So anyway, um... Bullet.png. There we go. That's the visual. And I think I mean, what we could do actually is if you say Yeek. I don't like the indenting. We'll have to fix that. Um, you know, but sprite size is 10 by 20 or something like this. 20 by 20 or whatever. Um, then it will interpret this as a sprite sheet. And then... That's the thing. I think we just dictate how things are going to be laid out. It's not like a proper engine or anything like this. It's not. We don't have to like optimize the space to fit all the things into the PNG in a good way. I think we can just grid it out and say, you know, make this size. Animations play from left to right and top to bottom. So um, you lay things out like that and it'll be an animation. If not, it won't. Um... Yeah, I want to put as much of the logic like that into the art assets themselves. Um, and then people can just do it in Photoshop or Paint or whatever and drop it in. People. Like, this is going to be widely used. I don't know, it's just so addictive to kind of, like, dream up these situations. But anyway, yeah, like, this This feels like this should be enough. That's, so that's what we're going to make. We're going to make this thing work. Um... So by setting sprite size, make um, the visual and animation. And we'll probably have a collection of, um, like we want defined sound or something like this. And we give it a path. Everything is going to be relative to the root of the game, whatever that is. So we might have sounds, bang, dot, wav. And this is gonna be called bang. Um, oh, Jesus, sorry, I got slightly dizzy there. That was weird. If I just keel over, someone in Norway just called an ambulance me. 
Right, uh, play sound back. There we go. Right, so that will be... That would be cool. Now, so we do have some concept of global things here. This guy's global. This is a kind of actor. The way I imagined this being created is you would say spawn a bullet at um, a certain position. So if you give it nothing, it will be at the center of whoever spawned it. And if you give an offset, it will be an offset relative to that. So 0, 10 might be at the tip of the nose here, or you know, 4, 10, or <laughs> why does that matter? 4, 7 might be at the tip of this gun down here. So, but this is only going to make sense inside another actor. So we've got ship and visual is ship.png. Um, now, if I was doing one of these games, I would want to be able to like position this based on mouse movement. So we're going to need some kind of mouse input. Um, we've got, I mean, obviously we've got libraries for doing it. Or we can just do the gamepad. Maybe we'll go straight to gamepad. That would be kind of cool. Um, Stuka equals thing. Nice. Def Stuka. Define Stuka. Is it an oo sound? That's cool. No, it's sh Stuka. Yeah, no, S-H-T-O-O-K-A. Cool. Um, Love like some text is saying, entity with brain with behaviors, awareness. Egg oh, I like this. Okay, entity with brain, with behaviors, aware of entity slash action, ignores entity, expect, infer, project action to entity. Oh, love like Samsung saying he did a language like this in the late 90s and didn't manage to get anywhere. Well, we'll try and make something tiny in the next few weeks and see if there's anything fun to play with. I just have such nice memories of it. This was a thing, it was like really funny because it felt like you were writing tiny brains for things like I, I was making a, a, a uh, I was playing a lot of red alert at the time so I was trying to make an RTS called stupid soldiers and it was called stupid soldiers because I couldn't work out how to do like decent pathfinding or anything like that so they were just really obedient soldiers you told them to go somewhere and they were like if it was if there was a lake in the middle they just walk into the lake and die um, <laughs> but yeah I didn't get very far but it was really nice because like when you clicked somewhere you would like that every um, actor you had selected would get that as their destination and they'd just start walking towards it. Um, and so you would just have like um, turn and a number of degrees or whatever or um, turn to like face point or something like this and we'd give it a position that would come from the mouse click, all that kind of thing. So yeah, define ship, like you go when um, gamepad button A. Then we'll spawn bullet at 4.7 and at minus 4.7. So there'll be a bullet from each side of hit. That would be cool. And then now the bit with Set of X position of yourself is going to be the mouse of X. Now this is kind of tricky because right there's a, there's going to be different zoom levels um, because you're going to make you're going to make assets of certain sizes and then to handle aspect ratio and everything like that. What we're really going to want to say is fit like. Like you basically want to say how high the screen is in pixels. Uh, like, so you might say your screen is a hundred pixels high. Now, of course, the that would be like the game space is a hundred pixels high. Your, your screen's going to be a lot bigger than that, but it will scale everything to that like correct aspect ratio and stuff like this. And we'll do that probably like we'll probably end up just like start doing this stuff next week. Um, but then mouse positions are kind of interesting because you need to get the mouse. Is the mouse position in screen pixels? Like, this is like a 4K screen, so if I was doing this normal resolution, would that be that size, or would it be 
do we give it in scaled pixels depending on your zoom but that means if your zoom changes then your cursor is going to drift but then it would be drifting necessarily unless like what's what's the center like it's, it's that's an interesting one i'm not quite sure how we're going to do mouse yet so we'll uh so you de uh, define velocity for bullets to decrease it with distance, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you could... What we might have is... Um, like, so these are kind of properties of the bullet. So... Ugh, I hate that indentation, but we'll, we'll work on that. Um, let's say speed is one. Maybe you can spawn a bullet that with speed two. And, I mean, like, we'll have to basically have a set of local variables that persist across frames. Um, and then maybe you can just set those when you start. Yeah, like speed and damage. So you have health is 10. Um, so it, you, well, that would probably be more a property of your ship, actually, wouldn't it? Health is 10. Um, and then every time a bullet hits you from the aliens, you're minus one from your health. And yeah, totally that. I'm going to have to provide things for timers and stuff like that as well. So you can, you know, if you get hit by something, you're like, maybe you're invulnerable for three seconds. Um, yeah, decrease it with distance. That's going to be interesting as well, because then you're referring to other, like, it's like, how does the bullet know what's ahead of it? You'd also almost want to be able to say, yeah, I mean, like that would be actors in range. You'd be like actors... Like basically, yeah, ways of querying ha a certain distance in front of you. Or just say, yeah, like nearest actor and then get the distance to that actor. That would that would make sense. So you do something like uh, distance to nearest actor, something like that. That'd be kind of cool. And then you could, I mean, you could set based on that, you know, do some multiplications and stuff like this. That would work. Yeah, and it's great because a homing missile then is just every frame you do um, you know face nearest actor. And then you've got a homing missile. It'll just constantly be turning towards the, the thing. And the other ones are just move forward. So, uh, Pom de Pimp feature proposal cheat code for Michael Bay mode <laughs> explosions at every fucking way. Totally. Totally. Massive lens flares. That's what's cool as well, because we've got cap. I mean, we can, we can stick all kinds of stupid post-processing over the top of this as well. So, that is lots of, uh, lots of scope for that. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. I think we, we don't need the colons in front of this. It's the kind of key notation that we're used to, but maybe we do it for visual and sprite size and then your local ones are just normal. Yeah, that can, that can define that they're special. Special ones have, like predefined ones are keywords and the other ones are your own, and those ones you can use inside here. That, that seems like a rule. I mean, as long as it's consistent, it's a good rule. Um, Darius is saying generic entity control could be cool too, like shooting a missile which can be controlled by the player. Yeah, how would you do that? You would... Um... Well, actually, that's fine, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, the interesting bit would be... Huh. Hmm. Because if... If we shot a bullet, and then we set the X position to be like this, then when we move the ship backwards and forwards, it's also going to move the bullets. So we'd be controlling both. But we almost, almost want to say when we spawn a bullet... We want to not have control of the ship. So we, you know what this is? This is states. We're getting into the thing of like wanting to go into have different states. 
And that is, again, I remember, like, even as a kid, that made a lot of sense. Like, I'm in patrol mode, or I'm in attack mode, and things like this. So you want to be able to switch between different modes. Yeah, so when you shoot, you go into kind of, like, bullet mode. And then you wouldn't be controlling the ship directly. So this would be, like... Um, I don't know, let's just do this. Bullet mode, something like this. And... Oh no, this is a... Um, normal mode. Bullet mode. You can't spawn bullets there. But you still want to go if... Um, When um, touching, um, actors in range uh, 10, and I want to say, I don't know, I want them to be alien bullets, I don't know. I want to be able to differentiate as well between who, and that comes back to those like marks. Maybe I only want, I want these bullets only to collide with alien ships. Don't know, we'll see. Um, but then... Yeah, we'll just say die for now. It's not what you'd actually want in the game, but something like this. Change mode, bullet mode. And then... And then when you shot, you would be in control of the bullets, but you wouldn't be in control of your ship. But then you'd want to know when your bullets are dead. So you kind of want to be able to remember, like, when you spawn something. Well, I mean, that's kind of cool. Like, but you just say when you spawn something. Um, kind of confusing now the terminology because we've got spawn bullet and the names are being used as variables here but then we're using this as the same name so I don't know what we'll do as far as names of actors yet I don't really want to have to require earmuffs on things but maybe but yeah like so So yeah, maybe you could keep hold of the bullet and then when um, dead bullet change mode, normal mode. I don't know. Maybe that could work? Sanjama saying tank system. I agree, but what for? Tanks everywhere. Um... Darius was saying, I meant something like a slot, which you do the transfer control of ship to transfer the control back. Yeah, I mean, that, that implies that the player is kind of belongs to one of the elements, which, I don't know, maybe. That would be, that'd be kind of interesting. I haven't thought of that. So it's like the player ends up being a pilot, you know? Like you go into an actor... Like you gain control, you possess, you possess an actor, and then yeah, maybe would possession be a mode? Or would that be a not sure? Pomona Pip saying, let's implement a login screen where you have to create an account to play the game in order to record it. Fuck you, fuck you! I didn't even get to the end of your thing. That just makes me so angry. Oh, dude, I've been playing like <sighs> Mass Effect Three recently. What a what a compromised game that, that has just like it has moments locked away in that game that are really cool and it has just a lot of really I just feel marketing it, like the, I feel like the hand of like the budget just on Mass Effect 3's neck the whole way through that game 
It's uh, I haven't even finished it yet, and it's just like, oh, and yeah, obviously it's Origin, so I couldn't play a single player game without being connected to the internet. Oh, fuck it. I am so looking forward to uninstalling that thing from my computer, but I really want to finish that game, man. Ah. Oh. Darius, yeah, it's kind of an interesting idea. I'm not sure what we do about wanting to control many things at once, because there are those kind of games where you control... I don't know. Maybe you have, like, an idea for a game where you have, like, three ships around, and you control all of them, and they all move in slightly different ways, and then, like, aliens are coming out of the center and emerging, and you're just shooting them with different things. I don't know. Like, maybe you want to be able to control many things at once. And then, how do you say that you're kind of in all of them? So Zanjam is saying, I just keep enemies and player bullets in separate lists and draw the enemy bullets last so the player bullets don't obscure how to... Oh yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, that's really practical from a, like, making this game kind of point of view. I'm just wondering, like, how far can we get away with, like, not... Like, I just didn't know what I was doing when I was doing this little... When I was playing with this engine, it was just, like... Oh, a bullet, like, so many things behave like bullets, you know? Like, everything was just, you know, oh, it's going forward one. Well, the aliens coming down, the bullets going up, which, like, two different things, but they did exactly the same. What we will do, uh, because we want to do everything in lockstep, we're going to do something very similar to that, though. All the state of the objects, like, all the actors, is going to be a big old list, and we're going to run through and run all of this. I'm pointing with the wrong thing. We're going to run all these little brains. Um... And uh, I think this might become defined brain, by the way, because I really like the idea of this being a brain. Um, yeah, um, we're, we're going to run through all of these, and then all of the things, all the values you set will be set into the second copy. So you're reading, you're going down, reading data from here and writing into here, and then we swap at the end of frame. And that way everything's in lockstep. And so we'll definitely do we'll definitely do things like that. Bullets are more like particles than entities. Yeah, totally are. I mean Yes, but like could they just be other entities? I mean I, one of the things that we're gonna do to make this really fast, I think, because everything's gonna just be a square or a rectangle or whatever. We're gonna use instancing and we're gonna like so I want particles and all that kind of stuff to be in the same system. I wanna make a really fast box rendery thing and then we'll just uh we'll just throw loads of these it might just become a hot mess but um i'm so attached to this like idea of like we just have this one kind of thing and you write just a little brain for it it runs separately and um baggers for my coffee break oh have i <laughs> have i been doing that frequently enough that it's a thing now um Tom DePim is saying, when you write books, people say, begin with the end. Please tell us about your final boss. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a personal question or if that's about the game. Yeah, if you're not doing a bullet hell, you shouldn't, it shouldn't matter, says Sanjama. Yeah, I kind of agree. Uh, so what's for this, for my coffee break? Oh, dude. Okay, so Borrowed us to just put a link in the uh, chat. And he's showing that um, the bindings for the Chipmunk Physics Library are totally building for Windows on AppVeyor now. That's sick, dude. I, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm so, so stoked that I'm not having to do those bindings and I'm not having to do the nuclear ones either. That's so cool. I'll, um, I just, it just frees up so much of my time. And uh, I'll still work on the, the bindings for the Newton Physics Library, for the 3D Physics at some point but um right now oh man, this just really means i can focus on uh focus on getting vario to be more stable which seen as uh seen <laughs> mr fiano's using it and uh finding all of its problems i just haven't had enough users to like to see all this stuff for so long it's actually great but yeah we're one hour in let's have a think where are we Um, well, we've got something here. Got something. So little things I don't like. I don't like that the... Oops, wrong machine. Jump over here. Don't like that this local variable 
is visually identical to this guy. That's kind of confusing. Maybe, maybe all um, when you're spawning, like maybe all actors are just in the same namespace. Because I mean, you're not making, you're not making libraries of entities for a game. A game is a is an encapsulated unit. Like you make libraries of functionality. You don't make libraries. And this is like this isn't a real engine. This is a shitty toy that we're making in a few episodes. So I think Spawn's going to take this kind of name. So you'll write a name like that up here, and you write it like this down here. Um, is anybody really against the idea of uh, of these like modes, like this kind of um, kind of state machine like thing that we're saying change mode and stuff like that? Does that seem like a does that seem like we can work with that, or does it seem daft? Any suggestions? Let's have a look through the chat as well, because there were a few suggestions of different things. Oh yeah, masking, like groups of stuff. No, nah, maybe we'll just try and say that actors are the kind of tag, you know, like we can just say nearest actor of a certain kind. Yeah, like so, like down here, you can say actors in range 10 and it's any actor, or you can give an actor kind here and it will tell you, oh yeah, there's five. And then you can say nearest actor, so you can, yeah, I mean, if everything's an actor, you don't need to say actor, do you? You just go nearest. And that's going to tell you the nearest thing. Or you can say nearest alien. Or nearest ship. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah, I'm still interested in that, um, the transfer of control that Darius is talking about. That's interesting. Pom de pimp, bullet time. Oh, I missed something up here. bullet time and max pain style man I, I just like the first time and this was in dark basic actually another another programming language <laughs> i was in for quite a while um that point where you start doing um frame rate independent motion and then you realize that you can scale that modifier and you get bullet time everything's just in slow motion it's like whoa uh, that was that was so much fun that was so much fun. Um, and you do a really shitty physics with just like rate casting. So <laughs> everything like the responsiveness of things changed with, with frame rate. Ugh. So bad. <laughs> I, th I think the winter's getting to you, man. <laughs> Cool. And then, I don't know, what else to work out? Because I think with this already, we can probably make this, you know? Um, there's still the things that are kind of global. Um, I'm tempted to... You know, we can have defined God, right? And God's special. Like, you can't spawn God. You can't do any of that kind of stuff. Um, you can give him values just like anything else. He doesn't have a visual. Um, he's ineffable. Um, you can give him local values and you can do things every frame. And God can spawn anything. And I think God will just be in the center of the screen all the time, maybe? Um, or could have a position in the world. I kind of like the idea of something, some other power that you can have that's kind of implicit and that can spawn things. Because um, something, like if you have aliens up here and you're get, having wave upon wave of aliens, something has to spawn the next wave, you know? So maybe that's God's job. Maybe. I think that's really cute. <laughs> I want to code God's brain. Um, I 
What are we missing? Oh. I think, I think with just this, we could make the thing on the right, you know? Just do a really simple kind of like aliens coming down the screen, you shoot them. I think we could do that. I, I think working out this mouse stuff will do as we implement it. Because that's going to really depend on how we do zoom. Um, yeah. Sounds feasible. And... Like, I kind of want... Right. So we have... I wonder if we can do anything fancy with regards to, like, having folders that mean certain things, like, oh, if you put it under this folder, it's a sound. We can just go with the... To be honest, it doesn't really matter. As if you say, if it's WAV, like you have defined sound and visual and stuff like this, it really says what the type should be anyway. It's probably not necessary to get too fancy there. I mean, you could have this completely separate. Like each actor has its own file and its own, but that's very Java. Um, its own directory and you have to keep them on separate computers because code is like that. It's huge and annoying. Okay, let's, um, I guess we can just make this. Let's make this and see what happens. So, I don't know. I wasn't expecting to make anything today. So. <laughs> but I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out that we need to really plan much more than this. So let's, uh, whoa, what did I just do there? Fuck. Right, so. Plan. Right, that's pushed. So, flow's following along. <laughs> Taking your own notes, I guess. That's up there now. Uh, let's bring up the REPL again. Let's go to... See if play with verts is around. Yep. Uh, again, to those who haven't watched before, Play With Verts is just a... Let's see if we've got it here, actually. Um, is a basically a few files that we've already created. Like, we created a little camera um, object and that we can update every frame and stuff like this. And it has a few functions. Basically, it's a few things that we've made over the course of some episodes. Next week, what we'll actually do is ditch all of this stuff and start fresh. So this is like basic rendering, so, you know. Here's how you like lay out some stuff and things like this. Not a big deal, we don't really need that. Do we, do we wanna use this? Maybe we can just ditch it now. Now, let, let, let's go with uh, turning this um, code that we already have into something, since we're here. So let's um, play start, oh, play stop, no, start. Is that gonna do anything? Oh, okay. Five. Play with verts. Let's bring that up. Find now it's broken in subtle ways and it's gonna make the stream weird. Then we'll just get rid of it and start fresh. Just wondering if there's any reason not to just do that. Probably because I'll find bugs in Keppel. That's really what I'm expecting, is just <laughs> just to run headlong into something already and end up spending the rest of the stream doing that. Okay, so this is where we often start. We've got a big old box here and we've got um, some camera controls. We can fly around. We have a, let's uh, set the default directory so I'm not jumping around so much. There we go. Um, we have a things folder, which is just how we can make, um, 
objects that we know how to render. So this is a thing, and this is a function that knows how to draw a thing. Um, this method specializes on this type. So for anything, this is what's going to be called to draw it. Um, so let's just make a some actor, and then we'll um, start. Yeah, start bringing it to life. Okay, so. Let's say the bullet, because the bullet's the easiest one. Let's bring it over here. Um, and we're going to start defining this to be real code. So we're going to do def macro. And it's going to be called define actor. And the actor is going to have a name. And then it's going to have a bunch of um, values. And then it's going to have a body. And the body is going to be this code here. So that's cool. And then what are we going to omit? We will have to, well, we're going to define a class, which is a kind of thing in this world. So uh, this is really just piggybacking on stuff we've already done. So program, we're going to be omitting code. So we can put the quasi quote there. We say it's, uh, that's the name we give it is going to be the name of this class. We're going to, um, Let's make some global hash table that's going to tell us, um, that's going to store the mapping between the keyword names and the actual names. Maybe, maybe. Doesn't really matter at the moment. We don't have to do that. Nah, we'll, we'll forget that for now. Right, and then this stuff is already defined. Like every um, actor is going to start off with. Um, actually, let's uh, let's subclass thing and just make an actor class first, and then we can just inherit from that. So we're going to have a class called actor. All of them are going to be unit um, cubes. We're going to scale them based on the size of the image that we're putting on them. Um, the Thing has a sampler, so we'll carry on using that. We'll say scale is, and then we'll just for now we'll just say it's one by one by one. Um, that's cool. We're going to do what else? I'm not sure what else we need. Let's just say that's an actor. We come down here. We say there's an actor, and then the values from here. Um, the ones that aren't keywords are going to be local, uh, like our local variables. So let's say our local bars are um, remove if. Why have I not got. Oh, yeah. Slime enable concurrent hints. So that's the. I wasn't getting um, hints down in the mini buffer here because this is currently live. Um, so I just needed to run that little thing to get this kick back in. Okay, so remove if um, is there a keyword predicate? I can't remember. Yes. There is a keyword predicate. So we're going to remove everything from values that has a keyword and the key in this case is first because it's the, we're looking at the first element of these sublists. It's going to be very easy to cause errors in this code, but it doesn't matter. Um, Local vars, let's just do, I don't care. Loop for var in local vars, collect, um, and then we're going to collect a couple of things. We're going to collect the, actually, how are these vars structured? We got a name and a value. So for var, we can actually just say um, var name and val. For consistency. So we're going to make a list where it's var name and then in it form is the var val. Sure. Or nil. That might be implicit actually. Yeah, that's cool. So if I compile this macro and it's going to tell me the body isn't used, which is very true, but if we go to bullet right now and just macro expand this, we can say that we see we're going to get a class 
called Bullet of Kind Actor with too many nested parens here, but one slot that is called speed and has an init form of one speed. So um, what should we do about that? We will go and get rid of this paren here. And then that looks more correctly formatted. Yeah, so we're gonna, do, that defines a class. And then, like every loop, everything gets update called on it. So let's just give this thing an update method. Um, the thing that's being updated is actually going to be called self. And it's gonna be of type name because it's whatever the type of object is. There's a delta time, we probably won't worry about that. I'm not sure how we're gonna do that yet. We'll leave it there for now because that's what the code's expecting, uh, but we'll see. And for now, we'll just put the body code here. Let's just see what happens. What do we need to do to make this work? So now we, when we expand this, we get a class um, which defines the type of actor we're having um, and it has an update method with the code. Now, things like move forward have an implicit um, have an implicit argument, so we're going to have to we're going to have to set that up. Um, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to define a special variable. So this is dynamically scoped um, called self, and we're going to leave it unbound at the global scope, and then we're going to shadow it. So let's go down to our macro again. We're going to say let self it be self and we wrap the body in that. And then we go and update this macro expansion again and we can see now that in all of these, when all of these are executed, this variable will be bound to whatever thing we're currently updating. And that means we can use that in move forward and all this kind of stuff. That's a good point. Actors have some implicit things. They have, um, they have a position. They have a few things actually. What's, um, So we've got a position here in 3D space and in, in our current project that we're using. We'll piggyback on top of that for now. Um, but I wanted, like when we were doing this set X, I want there to be an implicit uh, X and Y within this scope as well. So what we'll do is in here, we'll do a symbol macro let. And we'll say x is the um, x of, how do we do this? We can do with slots um, position of self. And then symbol macro let x is going to be the x coordinate of position. Right, so now. When this updates, we're gonna extract the position from there, but now that's locally available. I'm not totally happy with that. Um, we will fix that shortly. Actually, why are we doing with slots? We can just, let's just make this uglier. No one's gonna see this code. So slot value um, self pulse. There we go, right. So now whenever you use X, um, it's actually going to expand to this. I can never remember with symbol macro let. Do you have to quote this form? It seems like you would have to, but I don't know. Um, let's, just, <laughs> let's just start trying to compile the bullet and see how much it freaks out. So we do this and there's a few warnings. So die doesn't exist, play sound doesn't exist. Uh, touching obviously doesn't exist. Um, actors in range doesn't. Mouse X. Cool, cool, cool. So let's uh, stub these out. Well, move forward is the first one we're going to actually implement. Uh, distance. Mm -hmm. And so what will move forward return? Probably a new position, right? But that's another thing. What are, pos what are positions going to be in 
Darius is saying uh, suppressing G on slime macro expansion updates the expansion. Yes, super useful, right? It's really cool. Like, so you can just make any change here. So if I just remove update is now foo and compile this and go down and hit G, now that's foo. It's just a really nice way of, yeah, that development cycle. And of course, like anything can be a uh, macro expanded inside. Yeah, if you do uh, control C enter inside the macro expand window, on a, fo a form that's a macro, then it'll expand that as well. And then you can do undo, we'll close it again. So you can expand and contract your code as you need it, which is quite nice. Um, I need more water. Too much talking. New people are all text, which is a really inconvenient format for you to be, but also more manageable. Hey, Michael 72 Yeah, we're gonna do a. We will do a 2D game engine. Um, I mean, Keppel handles 3D, of course. But what all we're gonna do is we're gonna set the um, the rendering to be orthographic. There we go and stick the camera just above the ground and it'll look completely 2D. And what's nice about that is then we can use uh, like Z or Y or whatever, whatever angle we're looking for, whatever axis we're looking down, we can use that for layers. So we'll just push them in one direction or the other and we'll get layers automatically. Um, so yeah. And at the moment, all we're doing is we kind of, um, I'm not sure if you saw all of it, Michael, but what we were doing was we, in another file, where were we? In protocode, we designed what would be a cute little language for writing a game in, right? And then uh, based on uh, a system that I played with when I was a kid, which was just like everything was done as kind of parallel processes, um yeah and so so this is the goal we're now trying to take some of this code we designed um and turn it into code that actually runs because that's kind of that's often the way i end up working in in lisp is i like i define some syntax which would be really i think would be pleasant to use and then i make a macro to turn that into regular code and then yeah we go with it what kind of shmup I want to build? I don't really know what kind of shmups there are. It's not a type of game that I'm any good at, so I don't really play very much of them, which is a kind of, yeah, vicious circle. But yeah, I'm, it's more just, okay, so we want, to, we want to make a little game engine. What are the minimum number of things we need to be able to do? Well, if you want to do something like Mario or Super Meat Boy, any kind of platformer, you're going to need to do like decent collisions. You're going to have to have some kind of like be able to land on a surface kind of precisely and need to be able to fall off and all this kind of stuff. So there's some kind of collision detection. As soon as you get into collision detection, those conversations can become quite long. It's very tempting to just get too much into them. So a top-down game simplifies some of the things. Um, until we pull in the uh, Chipmunk physics engine that uh, Borrowdust is currently wrapping, which is a brilliant little C library, um, we're not going to have a proper physics engine. So we're probably just going to do collisions based on like a radius if they're two radius radii overlap then we're going to say they're colliding and that's that we won't try and stop them intersecting we'll just say when two things are touching and then the easiest kind of games to make using that are very old school kind of arcadey games so um we'll start with those and then we'll try and work it up there's no reason this can't become 3d eventually as well um, but I thought, I thought it'd be fun to do some 2D stuff. And it also means the art assets are going to be easier to work with. Um, and that, again, in this series, I'm determined for you guys to uh, be responsible for the 2D art. <laughs> I don't care where you Google it from, but um, if you don't provide it, it'll end up like the fucking Mitsa from last year. Darius is saying, I'll oh, finally Screeps. I thought about this game before. Let's just see this. Screeps.com. The world's first MMO sandbox game for programmers. 
Scripting creeps. It's an open source sandbox MMO RTS game for players where in the core mechanic is programming your unit's AI. You know what? That's kind of cool. You control your colony by writing JavaScript. No! Okay. Oh, wow. Which operates 24 7 in a single persistent real time world filled with other players on par with you. That's sick, though. That's actually really cool. I like the idea of just, yeah, leaving this thing going and then coming back and seeing if all your people have died off. Damn it, that's that's very cool. Yeah, that's a nice concept, there. Cool. Okay, so. Oh yeah, we were stubbing out some functions, all the ones that didn't exist. So, active in range. Mouse X. Why do I keep compiling it? Keep on touching. Um. Oops. Ugh. Just can't leave them dangling like that. It's not okay. Um, what else? Die! There we go. So with these, I'm not going to complain that all the arguments aren't being used, but then this compiles. Okay. So move forward is just going to be... Um, Right, so because our bullet is an actor and the actor is a thing already defined in this little project that we've got, um, it has a rotation, which is a quaternion. So all we're going to do is we're going to go move forward is going to be, oops, d is q to uh, direction. Um, the quaternion is going to be the rotation of self. Remember down here we dynamically uh, bind self to be the current thing that's being updated. So whoever's calling this it's going to be referring to them. Um, and then we are going to get, I think this returns a vector 3. Yes, so we're going to v3 normalize this and then we are going to Say set f the position of self to be. Um, oh no, we can just say increment. Oh no, we can't do it actually. Set f the position of self to be v three plus. Actually, do we have increment? We do. Shut my face. There we go. And then v three uh, times by a scalar the direction and the distance. Right, so that's our move forward function. Mouse x can just return zero for now. Touching can just return nil. Um, play sound can just return. I just want to declare ignore actors. We don't need to worry about that for now. Play sound can return nil and ignore sound name. Die is just going to. Well, when we make this, what do we do with it? Um, we actually need to define the spawn function. What did spawn look like in the other one? Um, in our little language we designed, what was it? Spawn, spawn, spawn. Where are you? What a wonderfully bad film. Okay, spawn the thing at some position with some properties. Oh, that's kind of interesting, yes. So, what is that gonna look like as a thing? We could just make a function. Oh, let's move these guys out of the way for a minute. Down, here you go. Let's focus up here. Defund, spawn. 
and then it's um, actor kind name and um, and a position. Again, our vectors are defined like this. Do we require our users to do that? Yeah, it's not too hard. It's just a little thing. It's fine. Just remember to do that. Um, and then the rest is and key. We're going to do some janky stuff here. And rest um, args and key and allow keys. Yeah, right. That's basically going to mean the rest of this signature has to be keyword um, argument pairs, but all of them are just going to be put into this list. So for now, we're going to hack name. Um, is we're going to take the kind name and just turn it into a symbol in this package because we know all of the actors are going to be in this package. Later on, we'll have a look up to do some other things. But yeah. Horrible hack, let's do this. So in turn, symbol, name, actor, kind name. And we're gonna do it into this package, which is play with those. Right, that's going to be the class name that we want to make an instance of. So we do it like this, make instance of um, hack name. And then we want to be able to take these keyword arguments and just apply them I know how we can do this actually in a really nice way, oh, a really nice way, a really simple for us way. Um, we do this. Pos is defined but never used. That is true. Um, actor equals make instance of this guy. And then we're going to set up the position of the actor to be. Um, the position and they provide a vector 2 but this needs a vector 3 so we're just gonna beef it up to that we're just gonna need pos and 0 and that's it that's all we need for our um, setting the type sorry setting the position and we're gonna return the actor now if we're gonna do this this applying Args is going to be full of keyword and value pairs. So we need to make sure our class down that's generated by this macro accepts those things. So let's, uh, let's just expand this so we've got something to work with. What we want to do is we want to say that speed has an init arg named by speed. Should be simple. Let's go down here. Init arg, which is, do we have a function called keyword? No. In turn, the var name, oops, in the package keyword, oops, that is going to be slightly wrong because in turn expects a string, so we're going to have to do symbol name like this. But now we can see that the init arg of for this slot is now speed, which matches this name, which means if someone calls. I wonder if it'll actually work. Nah, it can't work. Spawn. Bullet. Let's actually just make sure this is compiled. Yeah. Spawn bullet at zero. Zero. Speed 10. Holy shit. There's an object. Haha, <laughs> and its speed is 10. And its position is zero. Yes. Okay, good, that's a start. So now we've got spawn working. Oh, that was easy. Um, in the <laughs> Good. So actually, one thing we need to do is, um, there's some like, if I remember rightly, God damn, it's been a while since we've used this. There is a list of things that get updated. Like, yeah, here we go. There's a global list called things. And everything in things we update. And if I hover over, like if I just select this right now, we can see down the mini buffer that things currently holds a list of the ground, which is this. Cool. Right. Okay. Let's let's start with this. Um, this might work, you know. Um, when you spawn an actor, 
Um, push it onto the things list. Push actor onto the things. Cool. When you die, um, set f the things list to be remove um, self from things. What? We won't do more move forward because that'll actually work right now, and <laughs> we don't want that. Um, no! Okay, so what have we got here? Um, yeah, it's complaining about scale um, in move forward. Fair enough. That means things though. Oh, I've just stopped the... Why did I stop the game? That's dumb. We don't stop things, this is Lisp. Oops. Come on now. Right, so if I say spawn, then we get an error. Let's move that error over here for a second. And we are dealing with move forward, which is down here. And so we just want to say that, um, let's just do this. Distance is ensure, we can ensure that floating point is a single float. And we say continue. Um, but it doesn't work. Zero is not a single float when setting an element of array single float. What? Um, <laughs> why am I throwing all these windows around wrong? Spawn a bullet. That is weird. Okay, so that's not of type single float. I do agree. <laughs> that is not of type single float. Who is it that's saying that it is though? Some pipeline is receiving that. Okay, so let's go to some pipeline. Um, who calls some pipeline? Okay, it's in the game step. And so it's going to be Okay, so we call draw, and then we go to the draw method, and then um, I mean it's going to be our bullet that's the problem. So let's go and look at the things array. We'll put it down here. We'll go and look at our bullet. We can see that our position zero 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 zero. Problem is one 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 one, which is our scale. Oh, scale is not meant to be a vector three. That is fine, but we'll want to change that in the near future. That's fair enough. Okay, so we will actually just uh, where's the well the first thing we can do actually is just um, bring the inspector back up. Go to that bullet and say the scale is going to be uh, one now. Um, right, so that's done. That, that, now we can actually continue. Um, I have a there he is. That's our uh, that's our bullet that we just made at a terrible height. So let's. Um, what happens if I just run in it? Oh dear! Don't like that. Okay, fine. Just. Um, just ignore that. I can't remember what the name of the function was because it's been a while. Reset. Okay, so reset. There we go. Good. Now that thing should be gone. If we look at the things list, there's only ground in there. That's great. Now we need to go and look at scale because obviously something is wrong with scale in here. Yes, our actor is scaled incorrectly. And um, the initial position... We actually want to do this slightly differently, don't we? 
We want this to be the x of the position we provide, and then we want to we'll set this at one for now, um, and this to be the z of the position we provide. No, the y of the position we provide. And then if we say spawn bullet, we get one of these guys down here, which is cool. And then if we go and turn on our brain again, well, I mean, our, our brain is now running every frame. So if we go to define actor bullet, let's clear the REPL and just say print high here. We'll see the high is getting called along. So we've already got our kind of code for this guy working. Uh, if we say move forward 0.001 now, um, we can see that our, bu our bullet is moving. So, I mean, it's the wrong color, it's the wrong everything. Um, so, yeah, and now we can just start saying uh, spawn a bullet, spawn a bullet, spawn a bullet. They're all kind of connected together at the moment. Let's make them a bit faster so it's worthwhile. Spawn a bullet, spawn a bullet, spawn a bullet. Okay, so this is going to be... This is an individual process, and we're gonna we're gonna flesh this out. Pew! So now we're gonna have to make the alien the uh, ship that we're flying, and we want to spawn things relative to us. Um, that's gonna be really cool. So at the moment, when we do spawn, we take our position to be an absolute position. What we're actually gonna do is take the position of the current. Um, actor that is updating its brain and we'll take that position and add to this position and that will be the new position of the bullet. Cool. Currently there's nothing to tell our bullets to die so if we look at the things list we'll see there's a whole load of bullets in there so I'm going to call reset and now uh, there's nothing in that list again. Cool. We've got a place to start. Let's see what's going on. I've just been drifting away. Um, what's going on in here? Da -da 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 -da. Bloody hell! Loads have been going on. Um, we were up at Screeps. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bitching about JS. Like, a lot of languages are annoying because you have to use them for real world things. Like, if if it's just for making little AI games, it'll it'll be fine. It'll actually be pretty good. It would be better than doing it in say C sharp or something like this. I. I Ah, oh, there's so many things to hate, but it's mainly like trying to build robust stuff. Anyway, I'll go on about that another day. Uh, trivial game kit. You're doing true, true, true 2D. I don't want true 2D. I want shaders and shit everywhere. Um, Mackle will all be bitmap based. Yeah, why not? I want some clunky Keppel mimic. <laughs> oh, you got some saps in your borrowed us. Remember who has the ban hammer. Um, Darius is saying also Notch the guy who made Minecraft was making a game but abandoned it later which was based around entities which each had a CPU and you as the player could were able to yeah feed them assembly yeah I remember that that was it was a cool concept I mean man that guy can't do anything now without too much attention it, that's a real shame um at Banjos, why Lisp? Well, I mean, we write valid Lisp, not Lisp with loads of unmatched parens, because that's just upsetting. Uh, why Lisp? Because it's a really fun language to play in, uh, because writing um, with the libraries that I've got, I write one language for the GPU and the CPU, and that code is, you know, pretty interchangeable. Um, so if we go and look at a... Uh, the renderer over here, like this function, um, I'm writing in Lisp, and then I should be able to, this is when things won't work just to spite me, um, but it's being compiled to GLSL and then just run on the GPU. Anytime I make a change to any of these functions, CPU side or GPU side, they update automatically. So say, for example, that all this stuff that's rendering the ground is coming through this fragment shader. If I instead just set this to be, you know, some different color and compiled it, um, I will find that it's not going through that pass. What? Okay. Oh no, it's down. I'm an idiot. This is the end of the function down here. There we go. Um, we've updated GPU co code on the fly. We just remove it. We could try things out really quickly. 
it, there's nothing magical about the language other than it lets you use programming to solve problems, which including programming. Some problems in programming are best solved with programming. And it does it in a really sensible way. So it's really cool. There's a lot of craft in the language, but there's also a lot of beauty. Um, yeah, it's cool. That's why it's cool. Um, doing a little e Emacs Lisp. Man, I, I haven't actually really played with Emacs and Lisp that much. I do enough just to get my like configuration to work. I'm, I'm not a massive editor tinkerer. I just, as soon as it works, it's fine. Um, then we've got people talking about Lisp, so designed for interactivity and extending the language. There is there is actually a surprising number of little details that really matter as far as live coding experience. And and you'll like um Yeah. It's just Yeah, they add up. They add up. And you, you see some of these things like, hey, we've made this live coding environment. And you try and do lots of large changes quite quickly and it, it's a bit slow and gets bogged down. I don't know. I'm I'm biased, of course. I've been doing this for a while, but it's really fun. Banjo's saying, sounds fun, but why would you need runtime changes in a game? Because you can tune things just for just for playing around with stuff and seeing, like, especially if it's something small, just to be able to try something out, see if it, if it works, if it doesn't, ditch it. It's the tightening up the iteration cycle. Um, and again, because it's you're not compiling the whole program every time that you make a change, those changes are really fast. So the compiler doesn't have to be as quick. Say like Clang is a really fucking fast compiler, but it has to do such amazing amounts of stuff that you have to wait for that whole program compile most of the time. I know there's ways around it, but you know, idiomatic normal use is like involves a lot of compile. Um, Sanjama's saying the Uncharted games use a dialect of Lisp for all the gameplay programming. Yep. They like they're still got. They've got some newer game scripting people who are using something else. I can't remember. They have. I think it was. I'm not sure it was Python. They had some other scripting language they were using. But there's a there's a lot of old timers in there that are still doing a lot of Lisp stuff. It's beautiful. I mean, just again. Tools. So it's great for coding for fun. Yeah, yeah. Amongst other things, I mean, there are some serious programs that have been written in Lisp, like um, the. This probably might even have been mentioned here. But um, the travel search stuff for Google is all written in Common Lisp. At Banjos, thank you for following. Um, so we can do big stuff. It's not a very, again, it's not a, currently a very popular language, which, I mean, there are, there are fair enough reasons for that. Some of them historical, some of them just kind of ecosystem-wise. A certain num kind of people have ended up gravitating around the language for a while. And basically, like once people have got what makes them happy, there's not as much building infrastructure. We could we could use with more different people in the community for sure. But um But I fucking like I actually I mean, you might have been joking about the coding for fun stuff. Um but I think there are so many languages that exist. You know, there's enough languages for making Java beans factories templates languages. Ah oh, so many things for making boring fucking um like internal company logic there, there's room for languages which is just about joy right just for languages that make you happy um this language wasn't designed for that but it works for me <laughs> but um but yeah it's really cool um Agus, please make that pew sound every time a bullet is thrown <laughs> maybe that'll be the sound effect it's just me saying pew We'll just record that and we'll throw it in the game. Um, I think that sounds feasible. Where are we at the moment? Okay, so it's 2149. Um, we've got our first little... Um, we've like done a we've done an update of um, where we are with the various projects, kind of post-Christmas and all that jazz. We sat down and we designed ourselves a little language for writing games and we've implemented the first part of it. So... That's kind of cool. We've got 10 minutes, and so I'll just... Well, I mean, what I normally do in the last 10 minutes of any episode is fuck everything up. <sighs> so let's uh, let's just um, push this whilst things are still working. Spawn! Is that pushed? Yes. Good. Right, so that's available online now for everyone to fuck around with. 
If it doesn't load, I'm sorry. Just let me know, and we'll uh, we'll fix it up. So, what was the next actor that we want to? Let's go back to our language design document, <laughs> which is just a load of imaginary code. Ah, yeah. The thing with our bullet here is it doesn't have modes. It doesn't have these. I think for now I'll just implement this, like which is the normal mode inside ship, and then next week we'll add modes to our actors. Uh, let's do that. Okay, so we've got an actor called ship. Let's just have a look at what this code it's generating looks like. Um, we're generating a class, we've got some health, these things are now working, and bullets, we're not going to use that so much right now. Um, it's going to define an update method, which has got the same logic as before, which is cool. Um, let's compile this and see what freaks out. Okay, so it's talking about, doesn't know what this function is. Um, let's just compile that. Doesn't know about the variable bullet. Well, that's not good. Right, so it doesn't know about this. Why? Oh yeah, there's a, there's a good few things we haven't done in our big old beefy define actor macro. This is going to become an unwieldy mess, right? Like we'll have to we'll have to deal with this in time. Um, but for now, we'll just keep on throwing things into it until it's too ugly, <laughs> and then we'll then we'll fuck around with it some more. So okay, we've got update symbol macro. Let let's um we want these variables we defined up here to be available. So all we need to do there is do with slots. So in our macro here we say with slots, and we're gonna go um, put self here, and the slots that are available are. Local bar names, and it's going to use the first thing from our list of values. Um, yeah. No, uh, for, not from, from that, from local bars. Not like this. Like this, maybe. And this let should be a let star because we need to refer to the previous thing in the let. Re-expand our macro again, and now we can see that we've got two local variables, health and bullet, which come from self. So if we recompile this again now, we should see much, many fewer issues. Um, we'll remove change mode, because we're going to do that another week. Um, we don't have this function defined at all yet, so let's just go and make a dummy for that. Um, distance and optional um, actor kind. We put this down here with our other dummy functions. We don't need this one anymore. Compile those two functions. This is freaking out because it's like they're not being used. So we're just going to say we're just going to declare that we can ignore them from now. So, uh, so the compiler doesn't complain at us. Okay, so now if we compile ship, we'll see that it compiles. And um, problem is we haven't got any image loading yet. So that's going to be kind of garbage. Um, is there a way to hack that in really fast? Not sure. Stomach grumbling. It's going to be near the end of stream. No, probably not. Um, so again, we've got this to compile now. I mean, there's not. We can spawn it, but it's just going to look exactly like a bullet um, because. Um, come on, where are you? Spawn ship. Oops. Invalid argument. Speed. It doesn't take speed. Oh, why have we stopped playing? That's stupid. We don't stop. 
If we spawn a ship, <laughs> this cube is a ship, can you tell? Um, oh, somebody's heading off. Oh, and Michael's off. See ya, dude. Cutting it short to go cook dinner. Make it a good one. Um, Mackle's saying... Uh, should do a space trucking game where you could attach different trailers to uh, carry cargo and earn credits for tra trailers with shield weapons. Dude, that sounds cool! <laughs> of course, more trailers, the bigger, slower, make a target. It's like... Trucker Elite. Cool, and we have a push. Yes. I'm saying before calling it 2018 is a fucking good year. I got a good feeling about this year, man. I, I've got a I've got a really good feeling about it. That's right at the beginning. Maybe I'm just whimsically optimistic, but I think this is gonna be a really fun year. Um, it's it. I tell you what. I tell you, it's so nice to see all you guys back in the uh, back in the chat again. It has been a while. Um, yeah, this is fun. This is fun. We're gonna wrap up in a few minutes, but. Let's say that um, what we will do actually is we're going to make we're going to break spawn. We're going to say that the spawn uh, sets its position relative to so v three plus the position of self, and self is dynamically bound to be the actor that's calling spawn. So if I call spawn now it's going to freak out saying self is unbound don't know what's going on not happy about this but if i put this inside ship then it is going to start spawning shit tons of them whoa why are they flying that way what the fuck relative position relative position how many wait a second <laughs> what's going on here Oh boy, how many did I make? Quite a few. Um, <laughs> let us uh, continue for a moment. I want to see how many that was. Oh, 295,000 of them. Hmm, that was a few too many. Okay, let's, uh, let's reset quickly. How fast did it run that code? All right. Anyway, um, I'm gonna make a little. Uh, let's do. Let's add one more macro before I go. Def macro because it is nice to be able to spawn things. I want to do something as God um, and body body. Um, Def var. Uh, God is some actor as well. Make instance of actor. Um, let me say as God just means let self is God for the scope and then for the body in there. So then I should be able to say, I mean, like, um, this is still running, right? Yeah. And I should be able to, like, if I try and do spawn, um, I was spawning a ship, not a bullet, that's why. Uh, self is unbound, but if I do this as God, then we get a bullet. Um, also, if we go down to ship, and we spawn, where are we, spawn a ship. Oh yeah, uh, I'm not enjoying that, I'm gonna have to... I think we're going to have to make it like God be default or something like this. Because writing it as God around everything is going to be annoying. Okay, so we spawn a ship. And then we take the spawn bullet code. And put it inside. Um, here. This is going to spawn so many bullets so fucking fast. Oh no, each one was spawning its own. Anyway, this is going to spawn a lot of bullets. There we go. It looks like a steady stream just because of how many there are. We've got things, um, let's, uh, oh yes, I know, we're going to have to work on that as well. Um, continue. Notice now that if we, uh, uncomment the spawning of bullets, oh, they're coming from the wrong place. 
No, that's not good. Um, I wonder why. ZF position of. Come on, where is the ship? This is one of these times I'm just not really happy with uh, leaving this so close to working. Let's get the inspector out. I want to finish with our, uh, our ship shooting the bullet rather than anything else. Here we go. There's our ship. Def bar temp zero is the ship. Temp zero is the ship. Right, set F, position, oops, that was just pos of temp zero to be five zero zero zero, no, five zero one. That work? No, okay. Well, maybe it just isn't the day for us. Next week, next week we'll start with that. We'll start with spawning things correctly from actors and uh, yeah. See you, Borrow Dust. Sorry, man. Catch you later. Uh, one minute past 10, perfect time to finish. Let's, uh, I'm glad to hear everyone's enjoying themselves. Uh, I'm happy to be back. Next week, we're going to start with making this 2D. We're going to get images on these things so they actually look like ships. We're going to get spawning happening from objects rather than just from the center of the screen. It's going to be a blast. Please come back and join us then. Um, thank you for coming this time. Catch you around. Ciao.